Hi everyone and welcome back to Growing Up in Scientology. So I have been taking questions that I get either through the YouTube channel or in the supporters of Leah Remini Group on Facebook. Uh, and by the way, the supporters of Leah Remini Group on Facebook is a group that was created by myself and a bunch of other contributors of the Scientology in the Aftermath show. And we've actually got almost 20,000 people in that group now. And that group exists to, well, it's kind of a, a fan group for the show. And also so that people can ask the show contributors and a lot of other former Scientologists and former Sea Org members who are in that group uh, direct questions about their own experience and about their own story and answer their questions about Scientology and the Scientology experience. So if you're interested in that at all, go ahead and uh, join us in the supporters of Leah Remini Group. So I've been doing these short Q&A videos, taking questions from that group and from the YouTube channel. And the one I wanted to take up today was, uh, it's a simple one. What is an OT8? I got this question just yesterday and it was late at night and I was about to type out the answer and I was like, oh, screw it. I'll just do a quick video about it. So OT8, here's the simple explanation. And I'm gonna answer this question as I would answer it to someone who has no concept of what Scientology is or is about, because if you did, you probably wouldn't be asking this question. So OT is an acronym for operating Thetan. And in Scientology, Thetan means the spirit or the soul. And L. Ron Hubbard said, and Scientologists believe, that Thetans are, well, we are all Thetans. All human beings are Thetans. Um, you, uh, Thetan isn't something that you have, it is something that you are. Scientology, contains the description that you are not your body, you are you, the Thetan, and you are inside of and animating your body. Scientologists believe that a Thetan is immortal, cannot die, does not go to a heaven or a hell, um, that a Thetan just is and always has been, sort of. There is some vague concept in Scientology of the spiritual big bang thetans came from somewhere there's a general understanding in scientology based on things hubbard has said that thetans have been around for 76 trillion years or something like this um, but there's other pieces of information that contradict that in scientology i'm just generally throwing out some data points here and i'm only going into this level of detail about um, how Scientologists define and think of the word Thetan because it's relevant to understand that to understand what operating Thetan means. So Hubbard said, and Scientologists believe, that we are all these immortal, godlike spiritual beings called Thetans. And we have, through various things we have done to ourselves over the many trillions of years, and thereafter things that have been done to us, over the many trillions of years come down to a level where we no longer even remember or are aware of our true nature, our true identity, or our true powers. And that we as um, beings, as people, as a society have been degraded down to the level of believing that we only live one lifetime, that we're trapped in these bodies, that our existence or our life depends on these bodies, and that we basically came from mud. L. Ron Hubbard very much sort of shits on the idea that intelligent life came from mud, euphemistically, as dictated by the theory of evolution. And, and even that gets a little confusing because Hubbard does actually believe in the physical evolution of the human body. He just doesn't believe that we are our bodies, that our intelligence and our animation comes from the Thetan, and our body evolved through as in accordance with the theory of evolution, but that Thetans collectively, you might call them collectively Theta, um, dictated that process. It, it's really this sort of weird combination of believing in evolution, uh, however, guided by the spiritual hand. Okay, so I don't wanna to be too long-winded about all this. I just wanted to create this understanding where Scientologists believe we are these godlike immortal beings who have fallen down to the level where we are now. Well, L. Ron Hubbard said, and Scientologists believe, that in order to regain your true 
nature as an immortal well truly immortal like we are immortal we just don't remember that we are so in order to regain your full memory of your last 76 trillion years and in order to regain the ability to be able to operate independently of your body and in order to be able to um, bypass the stuff that Hubbard said is done to you in between your various lifetimes that makes you forget your previous lifetimes in order to be able to bypass that whole procedure you need to get Scientology auditing and you need to get Scientology auditing in order to, to move up Scientology's bridge to total freedom and L. Ron Hubbard has laid out Scientology's bridge to total freedom on like this poster it's like a chart it hangs up in every Church of Scientology in the world and it says bridge to total freedom on the top and if you look at that chart you'll see these levels and on one side of the chart is levels of auditing um, meaning uh, you receive auditing and when you finish each level of auditing you are assigned a, a level and then on the other side of the chart is actually the levels of auditor training so in order to do auditing you need an auditor to deliver the auditing and you need what they call a pre-clear to receive the auditing so on one side of the chart you have your levels of auditor training and on the other side of the chart you have your levels of having received auditing and the chart is roughly divided in half and roughly halfway up the bridge you have Scientology's state of clear and above clear on Scientology's bridge to total freedom you have what L. Ron Hubbard called the OT levels the operating Thetan levels so the implication is that as you move up these OT levels you are getting closer and closer to what Hubbard said was the native state of a Thetan, which is being supremely powerful and godlike and full recall of all your 76 trillion years. And you're out, you don't have any risk of getting your memory wiped in the future when uh, one body dies and you go to, before you go to pick up another body. And actually, uh, you actually even transcend the need to even pick up a body. You're just sort of like a disembodied Thor or something. <laughs> okay, so um, I want to get more right to the point here is you would think that since that is what L. Ron Hubbard promised was going to happen on these OT levels, that there must be something spectacular and awesome on these OT levels. And I can tell you as someone that was raised in Scientology my uh, entire life, I sure had a very high bar of expectation for just how incredible the information uh, or the processes, the auditing procedures on these OT levels must be. And I was in for one hell of a disappointment when I finally found out what was on them. I did not find out what was on them until after I even left Scientology, which is probably a whole other video to explain how that works. But so OT1 and 2 are really inconsequential. They're just these weird little exercises that you do. OT3 is where you learn that what is really wrong with you as a Thetan is you have thousands and thousands of other thetans stuck to your body and these are called body thetans now this is sort of a new revelation for scientologists when they um, are given this information because up until then they had been being told that what was really wrong with them was their uh, what hubbard called the reactive mind which was just hubbard's spin on the unconscious mind and um, a portion of Scientology auditing is dedicated to getting rid of the reactive mind. In fact, to a, a certain extent, all auditing below the level of clear in Scientology is dedicated to reducing the effects and or erasing, uh, redu uh, reducing the effects of and or erasing the reactive mind. And then once you get rid of your reactive mind, Scientology says you are now a clear. And now you're, you're ready for the OT levels and you have no idea what's on them. So you get to OT3 and you find out, whoa, whoa, whoa. I know we've been telling you that your reactive mind was what was wrong with you. But now, boom, body thetans. So on OT3, you go through a process. You actually do it to yourself. You are auditing yourself. It's called solo auditing. You sit in a room by yourself and you hold the cans of the E-meter and you use the E-meter and you think thoughts to yourself and you think questions to yourself and you look at what the e-meter does in response to your thoughts and you put yourself through this process of telepathically auditing these invisible disembodied things that are stuck to your body um, and causing all of your negative thoughts emotions reactions neuroses anxieties whatever okay when you finish ot3 you are told boom you're done you, all your body things are gone congratulations you've made it through the wall of fire, you are good. <laughs> and then you start OT4. 
and you were told, oops, you got more body thetans. Uh, yeah, when you were on OT3, um, you weren't able to find the body thetans that had been addicted to drugs previously. Yeah, now you got to get rid of your druggy body thetans. And you're like, okay. And that one you don't do on your own. You do it with an auditor who's a, so a one-on-one -on -one counseling situation. Um, it's not a solo audited level. So you finish OT4, you get rid of all your druggy body thetans, and boom, you're on OT5, and they go, oops, uh, you got more body thetans. Of course, the phone is ringing. Okay, so you, you got under OT5, they go, ooh, you still got some more body thetans. Yeah, so what we didn't tell you before, because you weren't ready for the knowledge, is that some of your body thetans, they're, they're stuck together. They're stuck together. You could have like 100 or 1,000 body thetans, and they're all stuck together, and they think they're one thetan. Um, yeah, those, those guys are really fucked up. So they think they're one thing and those are called thetan clusters. So before you can audit those body things, you have to break up the thetan cluster. Um, so, and again, this is, OT5 is actually one of the most expensive OT levels. Um, tens and tens of thousands of dollars. And again, you don't do that one on yourself. It's not a solo audited level. It is an audited level, one-on-one -on -one counseling situation there. And then I think by this time, uh, you probably sort of have an idea that OT7 is going to be even more body thetans. Um, but once you finish OT5, they're like, good, congratulations, you're done with OT5. OT6 is just a, a long auditor training course where they teach you how to audit OT7. And um, OT7 takes years and is the next au solo audited OT level. So once you get onto OT7, you are supposed to audit yourself six times a day and you're back to body things except this time you're not auditing the body things that are stuck to you or are stuck to you in our druggies or are stuck to you and are stuck in clusters now you're auditing body things in the environment you're auditing body things that are everywhere um funny little story when a hurricane is heading towards clearwater florida the flagland base calls in all of the Scientologists who are auditing on OT7 and they call them into the base to go up to the crystal ballroom in the Fort Harrison hotel or in the hotel rooms up in the hotel near the top floor and do solo auditing sessions to handle all of the body thetans that are steering that hurricane <laughs> towards Clearwater. And... It is a little funny to note that Clearwater very rarely gets hit by a hurricane. Usually when a hurricane is um, predicted to hit us, it ends up changing path uh, at the last minute or, you know, something. And you better believe that the Scientologists who are auditing on OT7 pat themselves on the back for making that hurricane move. This is uh, just a little glimpse into this kind of self reinforcing echo chamber that exists among these Scientologists where they are just constantly convincing themselves and convincing each other that they really do have these superpowers, these powers of telepathy, these powers of um, controlling the physical universe with their thoughts and with their interactions with other Thetans. So, you know, Scientologists do believe in ghosts. They just don't call them ghosts. They call them Thetans. Um, okay, so then when you do this process for a certain number of years, a certain number of hours, um, you say, uh, you, uh, you get, well done, you're done with OT7, and you go on to OT8. Now, remember when I told you that uh, the vast majority of the auditing below the level of clear was designed to reduce the effects of and or erase the reactive mind? Well, the biggest part of that auditing is called new era Dianetics. And our new era Dianetics, the vast majority of your auditing sessions involve remembering things from past lives, not present life. Um, Hubbard says that if you've been around for 76 trillion years, um, the shit that happened to you in this lifetime, it don't mean anything. The real incidents that have harmed you are way, 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 way back. Okay, so in new era Dianetics, um, people getting that auditing, they have tons of things they have convinced themselves are memories from past lives. Now on OT8, what you learn is that almost 
all of those memories that you have already convinced yourselves were your memories from previous lives, you learn, this is the truth that is revealed on OT8. I say that because the, the name of OT8 in Scientology is called Truth Revealed. You learn that those memories were not yours. You learn that all of those memories belonged to your damn body thetans. And that is why when you finish OT8, they ask you to read a little thing and attest that you have uh, achieved this. Um, what they say is, now that you've finished OT8, you have now found out who you are not. Now you are ready to find out who you really are. And the implication there is that on OT9 and 10, you're going to find out who you really are. And uh, the big joke here is there is no OT9 and 10. OT8 was released in 1986. So forgive me, I didn't go to high school. How many years ago was that? 96, 6, 16, 23 years. It was released 23 years ago. OT9 and 10 have never been released. The senior executives from the international management base who have left Scientology have all said the same thing. OT9 and 10 doesn't exist. When L. Ron Hubbard died in 1986, there was a big event presided over by David Miscavige and he told the entire Scientology world, or it might've been Pat Broker who actually said this part, that OT9 and 10 was all done. L. Ron Hubbard finished it before he died and he wrote it up and because it was done, um, and because 11, 12, 13, 14, and OT15 were also done, uh, L. Ron Hubbard needed to drop his body to finish his OT research. And so since 1986, all Scientologists have believed that OT9 and 10 is just sitting in a fucking vault somewhere ready for release as, cern as soon as uh, the Scientology organizations around the world reach various expansion benchmarks. And that is, even in, in, in light of everything else, the ultimate fraud of Scientology. The fraud that it is perpetuating every day against its own members. That's not to say there's not a lot of other aspects of fraud. Uh, but you know, one of the things that um, you'll often hear when people talk about uh, religion in general or even Scientology particularly is, hey, people are, be able, uh, people are free to believe whatever they wanna believe. Don't persecute people for their beliefs. That's true, that's fine. Even something that I think is crazy is fine to believe. Um, but it's not just a belief system. It is an active fraud. Even if you want to call everything else in Scientology a fraud, that's fine. But this is a literal thing that David Miscavige is knowingly lying and defrauding all Scientologists about. The existence of OT 9 and 10. So uh, this was kind of a long answer to a simple question. What is OT 8? And there's a few different ways to answer that question. You could say, well, OT8 is the highest level available in Scientology. Well, that doesn't mean anything to anybody. Um, OT8 is where you learn that all your past life memories in your earlier Scientology auditing weren't really yours. That's interesting, but it doesn't really give enough context. So this video might be a little long-winded, but I hope having all of that context and um, understanding sequentially where OT8 fits into this whole puzzle and how it fits into one of the biggest and most overt frauds of Scientology. I hope it's been interesting. All right, that's all I got for now. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here. Bye!